Okanagan Highlands Alliance is pleased to share with you a nature-inspired art activity taught by local artist and educator Ken Vanderstoop. All you need to do this activity is a flower, a piece of paper, a sharp pencil, and a set of oil pastels. We hope you enjoy this lesson, and if you create your own nature-inspired oil pastel drawing, we would love to see it. Send a picture to info at okanaganhighlands.org. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining OHA and Ken Vandersloop, who has volunteered to share an activity to create. Oh, hi, Erin. <laughs> to create an oil pastel drawing of an object from nature. So we're really excited. This is our first time ever doing this. So. Um, if you have comments or questions for Ken, you can add them in the comments section below and I'll make sure that um, that Ken has realized that it's there. But we're really excited about this and um, want to say a big thank you to Ken <laughs> for volunteering to share his expertise and skills. So um, with that, I'll turn it over. Okay. So hello, everybody. Uh, yes, I uh, live in OMAD, taught in the public schools for a number of years. And uh, I was telling Jen this morning that it's, I, I haven't done a lesson plan for so long. It's, it's really uh, fun to kind of focus on, on an artist and uh, a technique. Um, this is going to be a, an homage to Georgia O'Keeffe. This, I love this book. It's uh, called O'Keeffe and Texas. And um, George O'Keeffe was such a, an American iconic treasure of an artist, uh, born in the upper Midwest, taught public school in Texas, met Alfred Stieglitz when she was a young woman. And he sort of recognized her uh, unique qualities. I want to show you the photograph. This is just one of the photographs that Stieglitz did of, of Georgia. And uh, they're such beautiful photographs. He had a, a gallery in New York that um, it was where she debuted as an artist. So um, the um, way that uh, O'Keefe worked, she was a painter. And she worked in uh, oil paints uh, and watercolors. I, um, I, love, I love them both. Honestly, recently I've been looking at her watercolors and just being astounded at, at them. And I can show you some examples later on. Today, we're going to look at um, using oil pastels. I got these um, pastels at uh, Kelly Imaging in OMAC, and they're like three bucks. This is uh, uh, the, the box. This brand is Pentel. I have some higher quality ones that I like to use. Not to be confused, confused with soft pastels. These are soft pastels, chalk pastels, if you will. Um, oil pastels are, um, they, they look very much like oil paint. Uh, when they're applied. This is uh, an example of uh, what we're doing today. Um, uh, these are um, some daffodils that were out a couple weeks ago. And uh, the, if, you, if you notice, there's, there's quite a bit of pencil and there's quite a bit of uh, blending of color. Um, I wanna show you uh, a couple things about the pastels. Um, so this paper, by the way, is some Strathmore drawing paper. Uh, I also got, I didn't get this one at Kelly Imaging, but uh, some of you are probably using this same kind of Strathmore uh, 400 series. It's a fairly heavy paper. Uh, it's measured in pounds. This is an 80 pound paper. Like typical watercolor paper is 140 pounds, and uh, it's it's a fascinating history the way that that the weights of paper um, were uh, developed originally. Um, 
So I'm, I've got some pencils. I've actually got another. This is a, a pencil set that has uh, different hardnesses of pencil. And I just want to show you real quickly. And if you are doing this with me um, on a piece of scratch paper, what I'd like to do is to just do a quick color study. Um, if you if you look at the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And uh, I'm going to just do a real quick example. Doesn't matter where they go, but when, when you apply oil pastel, you want it to be pretty thick. I hope you can see that okay. I might move a little closer. So, you don't want to see any of the paper um, through the pastel. You want it to be fairly solid. Um, true confession, I, am, I have a little bit of colorblindness with uh, red and green. And so I'm looking <laughs> to see if this actually says blue. Um, it's pretty close. Um, okay, so there's some blue, and here's my red. Yes? Okay, so, see, this is kind of cool. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the pencil line shows through the oil pastel. So there are our primaries. Now, let me take yellow and blue and make green. Uh, so between the yellow and blue, I'll do the rest of our wheel here and make an area of green by applying a little bit of yellow kind of lightly, not pressing too hard, and a little bit of blue, which is gonna kind of dominate because of the value. Um, so I'll go back and you can see how this blends, um, going back and forth with the, with the blue and the yellow, and again, kind of being aware that the yellow is, is sort of dominant, you can mix in this way. Um, so we can, let me keep my yellow and make my orange by adding yellow. and red, and then going back over it with the yellow. And you can see, you know, this is the, the kind of secret of oil pastels is the way that they blend. And it's, uh, it's good to practice. with this because the blending is uh, one of the parts of the homage to O'Keefe that is really important. So, all right, and then I'll take my blue and my red. I was listening to a podcast on the way down talking about blue states and red states, purple states, you know, the state of our political climate. Um, and the way that we express so much with color. Um, so here's our purple state right in here. Inside is blue, baby, first. Gosh, love this color. So again, um, you can see uh, if I'm going pretty dark here, and again, that's the secret with oil pastels is to press really hard and you get uh, an interesting 
an interesting result. You don't, don't want to see that white of the paper coming through. So let me try to blend it uh, going from a blue violet to a red violet. Uh, that's that's a lot of what you'll see in the uh, uh, paintings of Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, one that I want to share with you is one of her Jack in the Pulpit series. Uh, this is called Jack in the Pulpit Six. And if you look at what a what a close magnification that is, it is the she's really just using the the, sh the form in nature to create a color study, uh, almost just a pattern. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I I picked this just moments ago and uh, got it from Jen's garden. Um, I think it's a morning glory. I'm not sure, but the uh, it's it's beautiful uh, in shape and color, and and really that's what we're looking at. So what uh, the mistake really on this one is that it was not magnified enough. I think. Uh, for this, um, and so for for my example today, I want to do more of a magnification. I'm laying it down where you can't see it, but at this time, uh, if you're able to get something to look at, it's really important to not do it from memory, but to have something that you're actually looking at when you do this kind of work. So let me take the practice sheet off. Put the final one up. One last sip of coffee. And what I'm going to do um, is to focus on the center of the of the flower, uh, I'm kind of composing it in my mind right now. And I want to make sure, I think what I'm going to do is take one petal and, and just make it really large. I have to be able to look at it. So um, this will be a contour drawing. And in contour drawing, your, I'm not even looking at the paper right now. I'm, slowing my eye down and trying to match what I'm seeing, looking at the outside of this petal shape as I'm drawing. Huh, is that large enough? It's really not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip my paper and try to try to zoom in more. Um, you know, we're just so um, used to photographs and and uh, magnifying slightly that is difficult to magnify sufficiently. What, what an interesting pattern. Um, so I'm going to try to go larger on my magnification. And again, I'm not going to worry too much about being photographically realistic. Um, we're, we're seeking inspiration from nature. Um, and and not trying to slavishly recreate what we see. Um, but but really using it as a takeoff point. So this is interesting as as I'm Progressing, I'm uh, noticing 
more and more, you know, drawing is is a way of seeing that that is um, unique uh, and and so focused. You notice that as I'm as I'm uh, talking and drawing at the same time, there, there are different parts of your brain that control each. It's really hard to talk and draw at the same time. So excuse me for a moment while I, while I do the drawing part. One thing that's so beautiful in this are the veins that appear on the, uh, you know, inside the petal, so delicate. Okay. So this is the the inside of the flower is yellow and these petals themselves are sort of a lilac purple that uh, you know, it's the beauty of uh, you know not being a slave to to local color. Um, in art, local color refers to the actual color that something is and trying to reproduce it exactly. Uh, O'Keefe certainly didn't do that, and this is an homage to her. So we, you know, don't encumber yourself with it either. With my kind of color vision issues that I've got, it's it's a liberating uh, feeling to to use whatever color um, seems to fit. Um, so um, the you know the color wheel that we looked at includes the three primaries and the three secondaries, but uh, what I didn't talk about was this black and white. Um, Obviously, black darkens, light whitens. Uh, you're, we're talking about tints and shades. Um, uh, tints being a color plus white, shades being a color plus black, and um, hugely important. So as, as I'm thinking about this composition, I, I want to use some contrast. So I'm gonna go in and just darken the back. Uh, I think I'm not gonna to press too hard at this point because I want to be able to blend it later. So, in order to blend this background, oh, okay. So I just broke a little section of the crayon off, and I'm going to use the side of it to to do a fairly light application of the color, uh, but a fairly rapid application. Ooh, I can't like that. Now, if I went in with blue, I do like a real deep blue personally. Um, let me see. By the way, these pentels are are perfectly good for this, but um, this is a uh, a higher 
quality oil pastel. And um, oh, I can't remember the brand. Any European brand is going to be really good. Uh, so I'm going to blend a little of this. I just broke a piece off and I'm going to blend this with my black. And eventually, you know, I'm going to cover up all of the paper. Any of this white of the paper coming through will be colored up, covered up, uh, and colored up. And so it's it's layering when you're when you're using oil pastels, you're layering, and although it's all going to be covered, um, it it matters how you how you apply it. So. Um, you know, be mindful of of what it's looking like as you're as you're applying the color. Okay. So there, you know, this is going to make the petals stand out, and I want to go with a much lighter color here. So I'm going to add some white, and um, and then layer that. So laying down a white base is, is a good start. One thing that you'll notice, I've, I've done these pencil lines, and when you go over it with white, the, the line takes on a new quality, and it's a, it's a real painterly looking quality. Uh, and, and we'll be using a pencil to add detail and uh, other um, elements of the, of the drawing. And it's one of the things I just love about oil pastel is what what the drawing looks like with it. It's it's sort of like a multimedia approach. You can see what the white is doing kind of on the edge of of the dark as well. I could break this off and peel a little bit to uh, try to work a little more quickly for the purposes of this demo. Um, and I, I told Jen that we'd be taking about 45 minutes and it's 25 after now. So, uh, I, you know, I may not finish this. I may finish it uh, later, uh, you too. Uh, and hopefully, you know, this will give you enough to get started and appreciate how the medium works. I really like that. I want to see what it's going to look like with a, with a really dark background. So I'm going to press harder. I'm going to put this in the background so that I don't mess up um, the kids is evil here. This has worked out really well to have this easel. Uh, I was kind of fretting yesterday trying to do this on the dining room table at home and get my computer up in the air so that the angle would be better. Uh, and uh, so I don't want to mess up the easel. One thing you can also do with oil pastel is to thin it with a little, with rag and a little bit of paint thinner or some kind of uh, you know spirits um, medium. It'll uh, you have to be careful. A Q-tip would probably be a safer way to apply it, but it does thin. It's an oil-based crayon, and so it ends up looking just like oil paint. There are non-toxic versions of paint thinner, turpentine, it's called, is it called turpenoid, uh, that you can use that are much safer. So, You know, that's getting uh, 
to be a, a good value. There's just a few little specks of the paper showing through and uh, you want those to be absolutely covered up uh, in order for, for it to have that the kind of effect that I'm describing. I'm going to use my light blue here to replicate the veins of the flower. Hmm, no, I'm not. I'm going to use the darker blue. So, and this, you know, really the way that this gets blended, I'm, I'll, I'll be using the white crayon to, to sort of blend it. I might use some black here too, just a little more black for the very center. And then trying to blend that with a little bit of the white. It'll, it'll blur that line. It'll do the same thing with the with the blue. You know, in in two-dimensional art, well, and in reality. You think about our faces, you know, the uh, if you were going to draw someone's face, the area around the nose and the eyes is recessed, it's farther away from you, so it's shaded. Same thing with the flower, these little folds go in, so um, they can be shaded. This is this is a really enjoyable thing to do here with a pencil. You can absolutely shade with a pencil as well. Uh, it it reinforces this idea of a mixed media approach. And you can actually, you know, literally shade it too, um, using the side of the pencil. To add shading. Uh, it's, a, it's a super fun way to, to add, um, to add depth, really. going right over the area where the where the pencil or where the pastel color is it works really well so again uh, the layering effect and and paying attention to the way that the, the color is applied I'll add color to the darker parts of the shadow and leave some white for the highlights. My flower is getting fatigued. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the center areas um, because we're really talking about the, um, the thing that's beautiful here is that contrast of the yellow and blue. Um, be considered analogous colors. Yellow and blue are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. See that how the, the, the sub drawing takes on a uh, greater value when, when the yellow is added. I kind of need more blue in here. This is, this is a situation where I might 
use um, something to blend it later. Uh, again, trying to retain some of the white for the highlights. And then going in and doing again more pencil. This, I've got a 6B and an 8B. An 8B is really a soft pencil. I'll try that. 6B is usually, like in the schools, as soft as the Dick Blick catalog uh, would typically have. So, you know, this is, this is not super careful. You may notice that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm applying the color in, in a pretty uh, spontaneous way. And, you know, some of that is stylistic and some of it is, is kind of necessary for this sort of uh, approach to drawing. You know, I like the look of, of seeing, you know, marks on paper. And again, you know, we're, we're not trying to recreate reality. Um, you know, we're kind of reporting our experience with this. I'm going to use some white to, to blend this blue a little more and the pencil. Okay, that is finally starting to look the way I want it to. It's blending a little more and the layers are uh, you know, sort of coming together. Yeah, that looks good. You know, one of the things you can do, for honestly, in the Dick Lick catalog is to get uh, a full set of just white. And um, you use an awful, like I've almost used my entire white already. Um, so, all right. Yeah, that's, that's coming along. I love the way that the pencil lines fade and blur into the uh, into the, the drawing when you when you layer the white on top of it. You know, it's starting to look like an oil painting now in that one area anyway. So uh, we're I'm going to continue uh with this and uh i think that i'll use i want to kind of replicate what i did here of course in these so i'm going to start with a layer of blue This is going to be really important um, to remind myself. I want to put the space, the negative space here, the void between these two petals um, in my, my darker value so that it contrasts with the color in the, in the petals. Uh, I'm going to highlight my white. Let's see. Interesting. Let me put my white down here. I'm going to take that down a minute because I'm getting um, rough with it.
Holy cow, have I used a whole white? No, here it is. Okay, so lighter values in here. Where the folds, uh, where the, the area of the petal sort of comes out at you. Um, I'll take my light blue if I can find it. Yeah. I love the way the blue blends with that black right on the edge. It makes it look like a shadow. And again, going over it with the white, blending. I'll need to get some pencil in here. Let me check and see what the, the edge of the flower, if it's shaded, It is, it is. So I can use like this area right in here. There's a bit of shading right in that. And then I'm going to go over that with blue, and it turns into a really dark blue, which is kind of the local color, really. Uh, so that gives it that depth. And show it along this edge. This edge. I'm going to leave it just the color of the paper in the middle for a moment. And then I'll burn up some more of that white crayon to show the highlights again. Um, I would just really encourage you to, to Google um, George O'Keefe, um, uh, she is such an inspiration and the uh, work that she did with uh, landforms uh, and the way that, that these are shaded, uh, for example, you know, we've got warm hues and this one yellows and oranges with just a little bit of contrasting blue and black. Um, lots of black in this with, again, those, those warm forms. She would work in series often. And um, the, this is, look at, look at this, um, Wave Night. Uh, her, her use of color is such, a, such an interesting, Thing. So um, check her out. Look at the Jack in the Pulpit series. Uh, I think we're, we're at the point. Oh, Jen. Um, I think we're at the point. I want to take this and, and finish it. But uh, thank you for, for being here. Oh, yeah. Come on along. Yeah. Uh, it's going to take me another hour. <laughs> and, you know, I hope you guys enjoy uh, finishing these up. Um, maybe we can figure out a way to see them, to share them. It'd be wonderful. Yeah, maybe yeah. we can do that. Maybe we can have a virtual exhibit. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we can just say thank you to yep. everybody. I'll, I'll finish this and, and display it later. You do the same.
information about OHA, please visit our website, okanaganhighlands.org.